African Americans have long had an awareness of their African roots, and many have retained a deep spiritual and physical connection to their African motherland. This connection has been and continues to be a very important part of African Americans' true sense of self and identity and their desire for freedom and self-determination. Africa is home. You're an African born in America. And your inheritance is here. Your birthright is here. And you should come and get it. Yeah, it is the motherland. It is a land of beauty. It is a land of vast potential. Uh, it is a land where my soul has found rest. And I, um, I love the land, I love the people, and I love the experience. I love the peace. Peace. Yes. It's such a peace here that, you, you know, that I haven't found anywhere else. Okay. And I love the people. And I love the fact that I can feel free. I know for, for us in particular, we were here when they enacted the right of abode law. Um, and in fact, my husband was on an advisory, he's a lawyer by profession, so he was on a little, he was on an advisory uh, in preparing a legislative instrument. So we were excited about that provision. Uh, but here we are, 10 years down the line, we believe fine, upstanding citizens. We've contributed immensely to this country, uh, brought money, brought jobs, raised kids, uh, have uh, involved in philanthropic, yeah, created businesses, involved in philanthropic works. We applied for right of abode and were rejected. <laughs> and um, to our knowledge, no African from the diaspora has been, no African American has been granted right of abode, which is extremely disappointing, extremely disappointing. Someone said somewhere, and I'm going to quote them, that a bad day in Ghana is better than a good day in America. Very, and really it is. I mean, with all of, you know, we have frustrations, we have challenges. And see, that's what I like people to understand. It's like, I have a book, and I'd like to show you a copy of my book. Um, and it's entitled, Returning Home Ain't Easy, but it sure is a blessing. It has been a challenge to be here, without a doubt. There's been a, a challenge to my marriage, a challenge to my relationship, a challenge to my own sanity and sense of who it is that I am. Uh, cooking is a challenge. Going to the store is a challenge. Getting your car fixed is a challenge. Everything is a challenge. It's, uh. But at the end of the day, we get it done. And nothing has happened to me since I've been in Africa that would make me want to return to America. You know, on the sidelines of America, that we have choices and we have alternatives and that the sky is still the limit. We impose our own limitations on us, but we're not limited by the gifts that the Creator has put in us because He's endowed us with the greatest gifts that can be given to the human soul and being, and that we need to exercise those gifts to their fullest potential, and that Africa should be on our list of choices and alternatives, and that you can fulfill yourself and become whole by returning back here to Africa. If not to come here to live, come and receive the other half of yourself so you can be whole and do what you have to do in your life and with your destiny, wherever you choose to do it. But you can never be whole and never be complete with Mother Africa not being a part of yourself and your agenda. So come and, and, and get the other half of yourself. Brother Malcolm X told us in one of his lectures over 40 years ago, to those of us who felt that um, we don't have nothing to do with Africa, and I ain't leave nothing in Africa. He said, why you left your mind in Africa? You need to go back and get it. So I say, come and get the other half of your mind back in Africa so you can be your total and complete self.